The global passenger car battery market actually doubled in size in 2021. And what exactly is going to happen if that happens again in 2022? Well, we'll have done what this book behind me says. We'll have hit the tipping point. And the future, my friends, will have become very, very clear. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the channel. My name is Sam Evans. You are watching The Electric Viking. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia at uh, 5 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Just want to say a big shout out and thank you to our Patreon supporters. I'll put a link to our Patreon page in the description below. Adamus Intelligence estimates that 268 gigawatt hours of batteries were deployed globally for passenger vehicles in 2021. Inside EVs reports that the global passenger XEV battery market significantly expanded in 2021, reaching a record level. Well, yeah, that's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? Considering it doubled in size, more than doubled in size, in fact. According to Adamus Intelligence, in 2021, about 286.2 gigawatt hours of battery capacity was deployed onto roads globally in newly sold passenger new energy vehicles. That's an increase of 113%. So as you can see, more than double year over year compared to the 134.5 gigawatt hours estimated for 2020. What would that mean, right, for this year? If we double it again, if we, I mean, we didn't double it, 113% is more than double, but if we only double it, so it comes down from 113% to 100%, what will that mean? That would mean 570 gigawatt hours of batteries deployed this year. That, my friends, is insane. But if you actually think about it, we could beat that number. If you actually have a look at all of the battery factories being deployed, being built this year, coming online this year, well, they're everywhere. General Motors surprisingly, we'll have battery factories. LG Chem, same thing. CATL, Tesla, Volkswagen. The list goes on and on and on for all the different battery companies being built all over the world. I mean, BYD, they built six last year. BYD are looking to triple the number of batteries they deploy this year. The market is going to be insane. It's so exciting to see this, honestly. You know, you can call me a geek if you want, but boy, is this exciting. Electrification is happening at such a rapid pace. And I'm just, I was just driving on the roads today and I was thinking, I wound down my window. It was perfect weather to have the window down. And then I started to smell the stink of diesel fumes and gas fumes and heard the noise of insanely loud trucks. And my brother lives on a noisy road. And I thought, won't it be great when this road is quiet and you can walk down the street and not smell the fumes? And you know what? It's going to happen quicker than all of us expect, especially at the rate that we're headed down now. Batteries for commercial EVs, energy storage systems, and other applications are not included in these numbers. This doesn't include trucks, commercial vehicles, energy storage, or other applications. You can imagine what the numbers would be if you included all of that. Battery capacity deployment increase appears to be slightly quicker than the increase of vehicle sales because we're seeing an increase in the size of batteries. Why is that? Because more people are moving away from plug-in hybrids or hybrids to fully electric vehicles, which obviously have a bigger battery. We're going to see this trend continue every year for at least the next five years. The top battery manufacturers in 2021. According to the report, CATL took a very, very clear lead, which I've spoken about it on a number of occasions in 2021, over LG Chems, LG Energy Solutions, and Panasonic. Those three players have a market share of 67.4% compared to their market share of 71% in 2020. However, CATL with almost 87.8 gigawatt hours deployed actually increased their deployment by 204% year over year, 204%. This means that CATL controls close to one third of the entire global battery market for passenger vehicles at 30.7%. This, my friends, is insane when you consider what CATL is doing this year as well. They're currently in process of building several factories in China and in Europe. One of those factories is down the road from Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai. It's going to be producing 70 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries. Apparently, LG Chem, who are in second place, claim that they are going to catch up and take over first place from CATL. That, my friends, is delusion at the highest level. But anyway, who cares? It doesn't matter. As long as they're shooting for the stars, 
maybe they'll hit the moon. That's a good thing. Doesn't matter, does it? As long as they produce more batteries, that's all that matters. However, I don't see CATL ever relinquishing their lead as it has grown significantly over LG Chem this year. One thing LG Chem is doing though that I like is pivoting to LFP batteries. Now it's gonna be very interesting to see the actual battery chemistry they use in their LFP batteries. And obviously they're gonna be using lithium and iron and phosphate. But what will be the energy density? How will they build them? What will be the structure? You know, how they, well, it's gonna be fascinating to see because LFP battery energy density has been improving significantly. And Goshan High Tech, we believe, signed a contract with Tesla to provide them 200 gigawatt hours of batteries in the US with LFP batteries with an energy density of over 210 watts per kilo, which is basically the current energy density of most ternary NCA and NCM batteries. You can see what I've been saying is happening. Energy density of batteries is constantly improving. It will constantly do so. Eventually, we won't need such massive battery packs. Eventually, a 50 gigawatt hour battery pack will probably get us a thousand kilometers of range by 2030. That's my prediction anyway. LG Energy Solution increased in size by 72% year over year, and they deployed 63.5 gigawatt hours, which is enough for a 22% market share globally. Most of those sales were reported though in Europe. Panasonic increased its volume by 39% year over year to 41.4 gigawatt hours, which is 14.5% of the total. Most of those sales were in North America, obviously for Tesla. The top battery cell manufacturers were CATL with 87.8 gigawatt hours. And by the way, these numbers are only for passenger vehicles. 87.8 gigawatt hours at 31% market share. LG Chem, 63.5 gigawatt hours at 22.2% market share. Panasonic, 41.4 gigawatt hours at 14.5% market share. BYD, 24.2 gigawatt hours with 8.5% market share. But I should add, BYD grew at about a similar rate to CATL at over 200%. So you can see that these Chinese battery manufacturers are growing much, much faster than LG Chem and Panasonic. In addition, BYD and CATL have contracts this year to supply Tesla with astronomical amounts of batteries in China. So clearly they're going to expand significantly. Plus BYD also will be supplying apparently 10 new companies with batteries this year, including Toyota. Next in fifth place, we have Samsung SDI with 15.1 gigawatt hours. That's 5% of the global market. Next is SK Innovation, SK On with 14.6 gigawatt hours with 5% of the market. And then we have CALB with 10.3 gigawatt hours and 3.6% of the market. Next up is Goshan High Tech Company with 6.8 gigawatt hours or 2.4% of the global market. And thereby, and they are the company who are reported to be to have signed a contract with Tesla for supplying them with 200 gigawatt hours per year of LFP batteries. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about that. Now, isn't it interesting that that company is actually owned 25% of that company is owned by Volkswagen. However, Volkswagen gave up their voting rights and that was when Goshan High Tech signed the contract with Tesla, according to the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. Inside EV says that a very interesting bit of information in the Adamus Intelligence Report is the share of batteries that the largest manufacturers sent to Tesla. Tesla alone was responsible for 23% of the total passenger new energy vehicle battery capacity deployed onto roads globally, down from 26% in 2020, which means about 65.8 gigawatt hours. But remember, this is not just electric cars. This includes plug-in hybrids and hybrids. What their percentage of the fully electric car market would be, I would estimate it's probably around 40%. CATL, 21% of batteries from CATL went into Tesla cars. Now, I would guess that's mostly for made in China Model 3 and Model Ys with LFP battery cells. But let's not forget, LFP batteries were used recently in the US. In 2021, 21% of all passenger EV battery capacity deployed onto roads by CATL went into made in China, Tesla, Model 3s, and Model Ys, making Tesla the cell supply's widest channel to market for the calendar year. That number will probably increase this year. LG Energy Solutions, 19% of batteries that LG Energy Solutions made went into Tesla cars. You wouldn't know that because no one talks about this. 19% of all their batteries went into Tesla vehicles. 
the chemistry they used was NCM, maybe also NCMA, 2170 type cells. However, those batteries were made for Made in China, Model 3 and Model Y. There were reports about California produced cars using LG Chem batteries in the past, but we don't know how many they were using. Now, the interesting thing is, LG Chem are currently working on 4680 battery cells for Tesla as well. Similarly, in 2021, 19% of all passenger EV battery capacity deployed onto roads by LG Energy Solutions went into my made in China Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys, making it the cell supplier's second greatest channel to market for the calendar year after Volkswagen Group. Now, interesting, Panasonic, 87% of all Panasonic's batteries went into Tesla's cars. You've got to say, Tesla could potentially just say to Panasonic, this is what we want, do it, or you're in trouble. Because really, I mean, Tesla has six different battery suppliers. That's not including their, themselves. So Panasonic, they are very reliant on Tesla. Very, um, 87%. That's a bit alarming, I think. I think they need a bit more diversity to be able to not be so dependent on one company. Panasonic previously hinted in March 2021 that the company must reduce its heavy reliance on Tesla. So they actually did reduce it from 90% in 2020 to 87% in 2021. What was the average passenger plug-in battery capacity? According to the report, the average battery capacity in passenger plug-ins, including excluding non-rechargeable hybrids, is between 49 and 59 kilowatt hours. As far as the three top manufacturers are concerned, Panasonic's average was 58.4 because Tesla's battery sizes are bigger. CATL's was 52.8. Obviously, CATL are providing a lot of smaller cars in China with batteries. LG Energy Solution, 49.5. Panasonic is higher than CATL and LG because it focuses on very energy-dense chemistry NCA batteries used in Tesla's long-range cars, Model S, X, and long-range Model 3 and Y in the United States. Very interesting thing is here is that the global market for batteries has changed significantly, and this is how. In 2019, multiple car manufacturers were severely battery constrained. Audi, Jaguar, and other manufacturers were plagued by multiple production stops and late delivery because of battery constraints. In 2021, there were still some signs of constraint, but much, much less than there was in 2019. In 2021, only chip constraints and OEMs were prioritizing EVs. This means there was plenty of battery supply this year. This is what enabled companies like NIO, Xpilot, Leap Motor, WM Motor, Tesla, and others to double and triple their output of electric vehicles over the past 12 months. Now, I'm not sure when the battery war will begin, there, but there will be a war. It's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. Legacy Auto are going to be fighting each other for the scraps. Honestly, Tesla scraps. Why do I say that? You think I'm a Tesla fanboy, but the truth is Tesla has signed contracts for enormous supply over the next few years. Legacy Auto, not so much. Now, currently, battery supply is doubling every year, and constraints are more about vehicle manufacturers not contracting supply in a timely fashion or being too conservative with their EV sales projections. Many have seen the error of their ways, but the question is, is it too late? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Have a great day, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.